Sometimes God will put an enemy in your life to keep you stirred up. He'll allow critics, doubters, discouragers, even some haters. So when you feel tired and think you want to give up, you'll keep pressing forward, shaking it off, not because you feel like it, but because you don't want to give your enemies the joy of seeing you defeated. Not out of spite, not out of pride, God uses the negative to keep us stirred up. There is no worse feeling than that of invisibility. You know, when you are doing your very best and it goes unrecognized, it makes it kind of harder to want to keep doing it. And when you feel unseen, especially by the people whose attention and approval you crave the most, it can, it can create a compulsion in your life to start doing things that are not even really consistent with your character in order to receive from people a confirmation that can be taken away just as easily as it was given. Don't be fooled by all that fake love. Don't be fooled by their phony smiles, their hugs, their I love you's. Snakes in the grass slithering. You hear them coming a mile away. I can smell them, I can sniff them, I can see them, I can taste them. And some of you get blinded by them. Your so-called friends, your so-called homies, your so-called partners, your so-called girls. They there for you when everything is great. They're there for you when you balling. They're there for you when you rolling. They're there for when you get there for you when you got money. They're excited, girl. We gonna do this, man, bro. Where are we going tonight? The sad story is, is that when you up, they all riding with you. When you down, ain't nobody in the car but you. You are the company that you keep, meaning. Your circle of friends is an indication of who you actually are, who you are becoming. You show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Because it's just true. The people you surround yourself with are shaping your future. Someone say, check your circle. It's important who you are aligning yourself with. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. That's good news. If you lack wisdom today, get around people that are wise. But look what the second part says. It says literally that a companion of fools suffers harm. Have you ever considered the reason why you're always hurt is because all of your friends are fools? If you're a person where all your friends come to you with their problems, that's because they see something in you. You're more balanced and stable. But you got to remember this old saying. If you're the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. Some of my enemies, I feel like I need to write them a check. If they hadn't have been against me, I wouldn't have prayed so hard. If they hadn't have made fun, I would have given up sooner. If they hadn't have told me I couldn't do it, didn't have what it takes, I might have been complacent, settled where I was. It was their opposition that pushed me forward. Many times, God will use your enemies to catapult you to success more than your friends. You spend your life Performing for a crowd, it'll kill you. And you're like, I'm good. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a singer. I don't perform for people. It's gotten much deeper than that now. It's the feeling that we get when we start offering ourselves up in a form that is more impressive to people but is not authentic to us. It's the mode that we all get tempted to get into when we start trying to bring a version of ourselves to a situation that we think will make a good impression. Here's how you know if someone's your friend. A, you can tell them bad news, and they'll listen. They won't tell you why you know, you're stupid and why that bad thing happened to you and how something worse happened to them once and you know, derail the whole conversation. You know, it's like, go away from that person. They're not helpful to you, and they're not helpful to themselves either. You got to surround yourself with people who want the best for the best part of you. And that's a really good way of deciding who you should have around you. Don't complain about the person that betrayed you. If they walked away, they didn't set you back. They set you up for the fullness of your destiny. If they lied about you, tried to push you down, overlooked you, it may not have been fair. But if God allowed it, 
He knows how to use it for your good. Do not be misled. So, so like, don't like, don't sit around and be like, I think this is what's going on. No, wait, wait, this is maybe what's happening. Don't, you don't have to come up with theories. Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Have you ever stopped to consider the reason why you're never able to finish anything you start? It's not because you're not gifted. It's not because you're not talented. The reason why you can't finish it is because you lack character. Because every time you step out, you don't have the stuff it takes to finish. Yet the only way you're going to get rid of bad character is you're going to have to actually go ahead and get rid of bad company. The moment you remove bad company, you're going to start getting some good character. Somebody say, check your circle. You've got to upgrade your friends. It ain't nothing bad. You just got to upgrade people in your life. But if you're the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. You cannot be the go-to person in the group. Don't worry about it. You have a gift. You, have to, you solve problems all the time. You can earn a lot of money doing that. You know what people pay for in this country? They pay for expertise in this country. The moment you're an expert at something in America, you can make a million dollars. All you got to do is be an expert at one thing. Sometimes there's something inside of you telling you that you are not enough. And since you feel like you're not enough, you start trying to do all this stuff to prove that you are enough. The problem is the people that you're trying to prove it to aren't even paying attention because they're so busy trying to prove to somebody else who isn't paying attention, who isn't paying attention to the other person. And now we're all posting and proving, but inside we're dying. And you've got to know the places that you cannot go, whether it's on your phone, whether it's in your mind, because there are some places that you need to stay away from on purpose. Because if you go, it's going to kill your joy, it's going to kill your contentment, it's going to kill your sanity, it's going to kill your peace. I don't know how many different ways I can say this. So many of us have to learn this the hard way. They act like they got love for you. Have your friends, have your family, have your relationships. But make sure you, be, you, pay, hey, you pay close attention to the circle, to your company that you keep. Because when you need them the most, I promise you, they will turn your back on you. You need to find you a group of friends. And you need to know in your heart of hearts that if you down, they gonna pull you up. And if they down, you gonna pull them up. That person that's holding you back, that person that's bringing you down, that person is you. Are you going to say you want to want to do something, do it for two weeks and then quit like you did last year, like you did the year before last? You say you want to lose weight, get in shape, get your business off the ground and then turn around and party, get lit, drink alcohol, eat like crap and continue to live below who you were created to be? Comfort zone is dangerous. When you're comfortable, you are at most dangerous. You should never feel comfortable. You should be happy and dissatisfied. If anybody ever tell you, hey, look, you know what? Just be satisfied with what you got. Don't believe them. Get them away from you. Never be satisfied with what you got. Because the attempt to get more makes you into something better all the time. You should double your business. Triple it. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. Decide today that you will no longer tolerate losing. You are going to be a winner. I don't negotiate with myself. I don't go, oh, wait, I'm not ready. Or let me count to 10. Or maybe I'll do it tomorrow. There's none of that with me. I say to you. I'm not here to discuss this with my mind. But when I say jump, you fucking jump. Because when you get your blood pushing, when you push beyond what's comfortable, it develops this determination inside you, this sense of will. And when you do that regularly, you're going to have a different world. Be the hero of your own movie. If your life was a movie and it started now, what would the hero of your life's movie do right now? Do that. Do those things. Write down your goals. Write down things you want to improve. Write down things you won't tolerate from yourself. Write down things that you've done in the past that you never want to see yourself do again. And go forth from here as the hero of your own movie.